Hi, welcome to the Linux channel. So when it comes to choosing a hardware uh, for your, uh, you know, kernel uh, software development or a kernel uh, build, uh, you have to keep, you know, certain uh, aspects in the mind uh, when you are uh, buying the same in case if you don't have it and uh, often uh, i have seen uh, some of my students uh, try to build kernel in their laptop which is something i kind of not so much recommend the reason is uh, their laptops are uh, quite fragile uh, it is uh, uh, any kind of laptop you can find it will have a sort of heat pipe uh, and with uh, it will have uh, some limited uh, you know uh, air circulation in the same so that uh, it cools your uh, you know main uh, processor as well as the gpu uh, the graphics processor and uh, various uh, other components in the motherboard so it is a sort of delicate balance it is involved and sometimes i still remember uh, long ago whenever uh, i used to take a big archive or a backup or even uh, any emergency kernel build i used to uh, you know keep my uh, laptop in a refrigerator uh, so that it is not uh, you know overloaded or overheated uh, as a matter of fact uh, while uh, you know doing the same so this is a sort of issue uh, you may face uh, in case if you choose to use a primarily a, you know a build system uh, for building your kernel uh, you may be a student or you may be uh, just started uh, learning uh, how you can uh, get into the world of being a kernel uh, programmer as so in that case never choose to use a laptop you can do it few times uh, once in a while in a month but uh, or a week <laughs> but uh, don't make it like a routine habit and it is uh, definitely going to cause an issue in your laptop and uh, as a process even your uh, the laptop hard drive may also get heated up and it may also cause any sort of you know catastrophic uh, you know failure or issues like that so be very careful uh, in terms of doing the same so the best uh, option i can uh, suggest is uh, try to get a good uh, a pc something which is uh, meant for some kind of you know gaming or something like that even uh, it is important when you choose a motherboard as well you can choose uh, a sort of deluxe motherboards you can find uh, like asus uh, deluxe motherboard and gigabyte uh, gaming motherboards and stuff like that the reason for this aspect is you don't need an excessive uh, uh, excellent uh, uh, you know a graphics card for the same you can choose to use anything uh, because you just need a basic you know screen output just uh, that's about it but unlike uh, uh, unless until you are uh, editing any videos or something like that maybe you need some more you know gpu capabilities but other than that you need excellent processing uh, uh, capabilities because you can do uh, multi threading um, while you compile your uh, you know kernel and kernel build so the overall uh, the point is the overall uh, test and build cycle uh, duration will reduce so in a day in case you, with a laptop you can do uh, you know maybe two or three times a day with an excellent system you can do more than uh, 10 to 15 times a day and what i mean you know kernel uh, programming means it's not <laughs> compiling your <laughs> kernel module uh, just an individual module as such what i mean is a full kernel build and uh, you should notice um, you know the entire uh, kernel may have some changes here and there in case you may be a student or maybe you may uh, be already working in you know uh, uh, system software development and uh, just about to get into kernel uh, you know programming so it's uh, it, you know it, it's a kind of a thing where you may uh, touch you may edit any code anywhere uh, you know inside the kernel as so the point is it's just not about compiling a single module and uh, claim that i can do it in any system i can do even in you know something like raspberry pi as well i have by the way i have even compiled uh, many times uh, the entire kernel build in raspberry pi so it is still fine as long as you have some you know adequate uh, you know cooling measures in case if you have taken sometimes i use some kind of a fan something like this and then i can uh, i keep it on top of raspberry pi board and these days uh, uh, in case if i turn on my uh, nas this i uh, point towards the power supply or uh, the front inlet uh, uh, bay as a, so so that it kind of you know pushes the air and uh, it gives some additional uh, cooling uh, for prolonged use of my nas system so sometimes i use for that sometimes i use it for 
the ups and uh, it's just versatile I, i just power it like 7 to 12 volts and i can adjust its uh, speed with a simple uh, transformer based linear power supply so sometimes i use this uh, for the same so you can use uh, uh, even any uh, laptop uh, you know uh, uh, cooling base but still having said that it is not sufficient for a kind of you know a serious kernel programmer in case if you want to be a serious kernel programmer it is not something you know uh, really sufficient so this is the reason you need to go with a standard pc build uh, you know try uh, Uh, buying individual components and assemble yourself so this way you can also have some uh, good experience about uh, what is the uh, exact hardware you are uh, purchasing you can go with the latest uh, you know ddr4 uh, memory and uh, you can also choose a processor with as many cores as possible so that's why i'm saying uh, you can choose uh, first for example if you are going with intel try to use uh, anything which is uh, meant for extreme uh, you know uh, computing uh, workloads as so intel have this nomenclature so say for example in my case my uh, cpu is uh, 5820k so the k stands for extreme it may end with x or k so these are meant for extreme so don't uh, go with uh, i5 is uh, and uh, i3 is uh, something like that try to uh, invest your money in an i7 and you can also choose uh, the latest uh, you know ryzen uh, although i have not uh, personally uh, Uh, tested any time or i have not seen any of my clients or even uh, students using a ryzen uh, based system as such although you can see some online reviews about uh, uh, you know ryzen but the question is uh, i mean uh, amd ryzen the question is how far it is suitable for uh, you know core uh, systems development is my question it's not i'm here uh, referring about gaming or some sort of you know performance like that i i'm more bothered about you do a complete kernel build how much time it takes in a ryzen uh, cpu and what is the you know uh, uh, thermal dissipation and how is uh, the you know um, the overall uh, you know performance curve of the processor so that's what i'm more bothered and and also a case like prolong to use as so try to emphasize on these factors invest your money it's a one time investment don't be in a hurry uh, don't compromise invest your money keep all these parameters in uh, you know in your uh, checklist and uh, in case if you are still yet to uh, Uh, not able to invest you can just make a note of the same and uh, by the time you you can start collecting some amount uh, some money and uh, in case if you are lucky and suddenly the market uh, price for the hardware what you are thinking about have dropped and then you can take a decision and you can buy you know the hardware which you are having in your mind or in case if you are lucky then you can even buy an, uh, an upgraded hardware as well so this is quite common uh, the more you wait the more better uh, <laughs> you know system hardware uh, specs you can buy uh, in the market so these are the things you can you know overall consider as so so one advantage you get is uh, like in my case i have uh, uh, six cpu cores and i get uh, totally 12 threads so with this uh, what you have an advantage is you do a make uh, or a build you know make uh, you can do make minus j in the, in this case i can do around 16 uh, threads or else i can do in case i don't want to fully overload all the cores i i'm also parallelly doing some other work i can do uh, make minus j 10 and make minus j 8 and stuff like that so this way i can allocate uh, you know some amount of resource for kernel build <coughs> i'm sorry and uh, i can allocate uh, some other amount of resource for other uh, mundane activities I, as i do in the system while it is compiling the same or else if you are doing a dedicated build you can just fully load the system and uh, with um, uh, uh, next coming down uh, about uh, cooling uh, choice never uh, you know try to avoid uh, uh, like conventional uh, air based cooling uh, you know fans and heat sinks as such try to get a liquid cooled uh, a uh, system uh, try to again invest your money in something like that you can consider investing in your uh, your money uh, something like that because down the lane what happens is it stabilizes your overall temperature of all the cores of your processor no matter whatever the load uh, you put onto the same as so in my case uh, my system uh, since uh, these days it is summers it is quite hot you can see almost i started again you know sweating <laughs> so since it is uh, summer 
it is getting quite hot um, otherwise uh, even with the full load if i give make minus j you know 16 uh, or uh, yeah uh, or else uh, you know 12 threads uh, because it is totally 12 threads as so in my case so in that case uh, still it uh, it will uh, reach around 42 to 43 uh, degrees uh, celsius so it won't cross any time more than that in a you know typical uh, 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 time like uh, once it crosses this peak you know summer times so, so in, since it is bangalore uh, after uh, august or something it starts uh, raining uh, down the lane and uh, right from uh, july and uh, till january or february it is uh, relatively cold here in bangalore as so it depends on the place uh, where you live as so i have been in italy because it is little bit uh, situated uh, in coastal region you get often uh, uh, quite hot and humid uh, quite often often uh, but at the same time you get also snow and it also going to be cold enough so it it depends on uh, the area where you stay and in case if the outside temperature is like around 28 degrees celsius at the max you know in the daytime your processor may touch around 40 degrees celsius which is uh, fairly good enough and uh, make sure that it is not climbing too much and sometimes uh, if it accumulates any dust you can do a vacuum clean so these are various parameters i am saying about very serious kernel development it is not meant for in case you are a student one day you want to compile it and then just you know leave it i'm not saying for i'm not saying these tips you know for developers in this context i'm saying in case you want to be a very serious developer in case you want to do uh, build uh, like me almost you know many times a day it's just not couple of times a day and uh, i mean these days i'm not doing it but uh, there are times i used to do most more than uh, 10 15 times a day so in that case these are various parameters you can keep in uh, mind also choose a power supply which is a little bit more than whatever you need because once again it is going to overheat and it will run in the load when you do a full kernel build so, so try to choose a good power supply so that uh, it has that uh, you know below that you know threshold performance uh, and it is not getting into a situation that it is getting overheated and it is it's uh, you know cooling fan is running at full speed the same thing applies uh, for your kernel cooling system as well so in case if you have a liquid cooling system uh, try to choose a, you know double fan um, you know radiator model don't again try to squeeze your money and try to get a single uh, uh, you know um, i don't know how to say it. the radiators will be almost with double fans or a single fan uh, based radiator so something like that if it is a little compact what happens is once again it will have that uh, sometime once it cross crosses a specific threshold again it may get overheated so try to you know park your money for all this uh, aspect so that once you are capable of buying such a you know um, hardware then you can invest your money so till then you can wait and slowly the prices also will fall down and then you can just pick whichever it is coming uh, with respect to your you know budget and capability of buying the same as so these are various parameters and uh, one more advantage you get with more cores is you can run uh, multiple vms and uh, uh, there are cases sometimes you may need to compile your kernel in a vm as so in my case uh, often what happens is uh, i got couple of customers uh, they need a kernel build a specific kernel build on a very old ubuntu 1404 lts version so in that case uh, i don't have that uh, installed in any of my systems but uh, at this point of time uh, because it is quite uh, essential i have installed in this laptop but before that i don't have that install anywhere else so when i do a kernel build in such system so what i do is uh, sometimes i do uh, you know install in uh, vm and uh, i do install in a uh, virtual box or else uh, qmo whichever it uh, you know uh, demands that you know kind of a requirement so i do sometimes install in a uh, uh, virtual box and uh, in that case i can do a kernel build in this uh, you know virtual box once again this is not that frequent it is just uh, uh, maybe a couple of times a day so it's fine with the same but uh, having uh, more cores and more threads essentially with hyper threading so what is the advantage is you can run 
a good performance kernel build in a vm also so, so this also is something you can consider suppose in case you have a processor uh, maybe it's a very recent processor but it has totally eight threads so what happens is the base operating system is also going to consume some amount of uh, processing power and on top of it your uh, you know vm is also going to kind of consume some amount of you know processing load so this is also one reason try to choose a processor with more cores and uh, unfortunately the 10 core uh, intel processor is quite expensive but uh, you know things like that is uh, very much um, you know favorable for a sort of kernel build system but uh, other than that in case you have a xeon system it is also appreciated because in case if you have a xeon system you may have ecc ram so with error checking and checksumming what happens is uh, you get more reliability the system will be more uh, uh, reliable and robust so you won't have any sort of you know mismatch in any you know uh, ram storage or uh, you know uh, data corruption or something like that a sort of bit rot or some such uh, sort of situation as so the system stability will increase you can also choose uh, uh, these kind of systems for even video rendering as well so the only downside what i see in that is uh, you know xeon processor the core level uh, you know processing computational power is quite lesser than a desktop processor so in case you have a desktop machine with uh, 10 cores uh, with you know 20 threads with hyper threading compare it with a xeon uh, processor what happens is in case you have a xeon processor with 24 uh, cores after hyper threading of 24 uh, you know threads after hyper threading still it is going to underperform your uh, you know desktop processor because uh, you know what happens is essentially its per core uh, performance is quite limited so you should consider about the same but in case if you have an, a xeon uh, a system or server uh, lying around in your office and uh, it is not being utilized by anyone definitely you can use it as your uh, uh, you know central uh, you know build system or build server uh, for your kernel builds as such. so it can be even for production use it will be quite useful or else it is like you know you want to learn in that case also it is going to be useful. so consider all these facts in case you have a old system and it is not you know performing up to the mark think about it try to upgrade your hardware and uh, you know build a complete you know kernel uh, build system uh, by yourself you can uh, buy individual components and the hardware whichever it is compatible the motherboard take your time choose a good you know motherboard as well as the ram uh, try to make sure uh, you have enough uh, it's not a question of you know storage space in the ram these days even a 8 gb ram is more than enough for a kernel build <laughs> i mean even a 4 gb ram is also enough more than enough for a kernel build what is the thing is try to uh, emphasize the you know speed of your ram in case if you are buying ddr4 check what is the total uh, speed gigahertz uh, speed in which it is running because this is again important uh, you get better performance uh, because end of the day compilation does happen in you know cpu and cpu cache and then ram effectively so data will be moved to and fro and the more faster it is moved the more faster it is uh, you know executed the more faster will be your compilation and uh, build and test cycles uh, eventually so last but not least you can also <laughs> think about uh, getting an ssd and uh, of course there will be a lot of you know read and write cycles involved and that is going to degrade your ssd performance or life of your ssd but having said that try to consider uh, uh, getting an uh, you know cheap 128 gb but good branded ssd and uh, that way uh, it is also going to speed up your uh, you know test and build cycles uh, drastically so hope you guys uh, love these tips in case if you have any questions uh, regarding the same you can discuss in uh, youtube uh, uh, comments thank you very much for watching this video guys have a nice day bye bye